Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Days. I'm Wanda and today I've got a lot of peppers and I needed to do something with them. So I went through old books. This is a 1960 canon book from Ball. It's the original Ball Blue Book. There were probably those before it, but I have a 1960 thanks to a subscriber. And I said, what can I do with my peppers? So I found a recipe on page 36 called pepper hash or relish. So today I spent the day making pepper hash. It is amazing. I had enough left over that I made potato salad and this is what Danny thought of it. The potato salad with the pepper hash. Oh yeah. I made pepper hash today so. Let's get some. We got some of all the colors in it. We got the greens, the reds, I see some onions. And yellow. Mm. I like that. You know what? You taste a little bit of vinegar, but I taste the individual peppers as well as the potato. That that's what I'm after when I'm eating something like this. Because the to just eat potato salad and I taste potatoes, that's just that's bland to me. But this I can actually taste now. This is a not so, this is a food. Your jalapeno. It's not hot. It has the jalapeno taste. Mm -hmm. and, and the Marconi peppers. Yeah, that's. And it's not like when you're eating a pickle that's done with cucumbers. Oh no no, this has no pickle taste like a cucumber at all. Yeah, the cucumbers are crunchy. Yeah. These are. The peppers are all soft, like the potato. You can't actually, you don't actually feel yourself biting into a pepper, but you have the pepper taste in it and it, it it blends really really well so that's that's a real good thing there guys mm. yeah i'm glad we did the matter of fact i'll be honest with you i, I wouldn't mind us doing more of that well you know deep south grows a lot of peppers we do so pepper hash is probably going to be a thing of the future and we still have some fresh onions yep so we still got taters so yeah, probably gonna happen. So now I'm gonna show you the recipe, how I made it, and 1960s canon book. I love these old books, but there was a few issues and I had to um, sit down and, and explain a little bit on what I did with the recipe because back when my granny and your granny and great grandmas and all that did this, they knew what they were doing. They didn't have to have it spelled out exactly. So stay tuned for the recipe. Guys, pepper mash, it is awesome. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this. All colors of peppers, yellow, green, red. We need a recipe. I have ball blue books. I have several of these in three different years, five to eight years different. But I was sent this one from 1960. Isn't that amazing? So I decided to get it out. I've got peppers chopped up. What are we going to do? And look at this. Pepper, hash, or relish. Use sweet peppers, green peppers, hot pepper if you want it, um, medium onions, sugar, salt, spices, and vinegar. Y'all, we're going to follow the pepper hash. We're going to follow the pepper hash or relish recipe from 1960. I just measured these. I have six cups of chopped peppers. Six cups of peppers, four cups of onion. Now let's go back to the recipe and talk a minute. Pepper hash or relish. This is our grandmother's recipe, guys. This is something our grandmothers would have known how to make when they had excess pepper and so we have excess pepper. This is what I'm going to be doing. Now, it says 12 sweet peppers, red, 12 green, one hot pepper, and six medium onions. So to me, that tells me peppers and onions, you get more peppers than you do onions. I did six cups of chopped up sweet peppers, and then I did four cups of chopped up onions. So not as many onions as peppers. That's just what I'm going by, what I see here. 
And we're going to have to work with the recipe because it doesn't say how big the peppers are. It doesn't say how small the peppers are. It does say medium-sized onions, but are our medium onions the same as their medium onions? You know, they grew some nice vegetables back in the 60s. So I'm just guesstimating here, and that's okay. We're water bathing, and you can't mix, you can't mess it up. I've, it calls for one cup of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of spices, and two cups of vinegar. That's only three cups of juice when you make it to go over it. So that's approximately what I need for the amount of veggies that I have. And the veggies are going to shrink down some because this is what we're fixing to do. I've got them all chopped and peeled. We're going to cover them with boiling water and let them stand five minutes. We're going to drain them, cover them again with boiling water, let them stand 10 minutes, and we're going to drain them again. On the stove, I'm going to add my sugar, salt, and spices. And you can tie your spices up in a bag to the vinegar. We're going to simmer that for 15 minutes and kind of try to time it where the vegetables are coming out of the boiling water and going into the um, vinegar sugar mixture and when it's been on for a while. And then we're going to, it says, add vegetables and simmer 10 minutes. Then we bring it to a bowl and you pour the boiling hot mixture into ball jars and seal at once. Okay, it says seal at once. It don't tell you water bath. It don't tell you anything. So now, 1960, we got to go see what they mean, seal at once. Okay, I went back to the pickles and relish, and it gives you all kinds of information here, really good information on the um, pickles, uh, when to harvest and when to, what to put them in, what not to put them in, all this kind of stuff. But we're down here with jars of pickles and relish must be sealed airtight while boiling hot or else processed in a water bath canner. Can long enough to destroy bacteria, molds, and yeast. See cold sealing, page six. Okay, so this means we're supposed to get this up to boiling if we're going to be cold sealing. Not lukewarm and not turn the fire off or anything like that. You want it boiling when you put it in the jar. Cold sealing or filling jars with cold pickles or preserves, which are not to be processed, is not a reliable way to process food. Heat is necessary for sealing. And you can see vacuum sealing on page three, but we're not vacuum sealing. Pickles, meaning both pickle and liquid and preserves, which are not packed boiling hot and quickly sealed or else processed in a water bath canner are likely to spoil. If a two piece metal caps are used in cold sealing, the bands must be left on to keep the jars closed. All right, I'm going to go ahead and water bath mine, even though it doesn't say it. I'm going to boil mine, and I'm not going to do the cold, cold sealing, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in a water bath canner and can it for probably 10 to 15 minutes in a water bath canner on top of boiling it. That way I'm assured of a good seal plus killing bacteria. On the lids and stuff now, back in the day in that book, it would tell you to put these in hot water and keep them hot. Now it says to wash them in hot soapy water. And then I'm just going to lay them aside for right now. My jars, I've got them in here. I'm going to wash them. And we're going to use the little um, half pint. And I'm going to wash and rinse them and sit these aside. I need my jars hot. The lids are not going to be hot. And we're going to put them in um, the oven. So this jar will be warm. I'm putting it in 230. So that should kill any bacteria that's on it. And then we are going to water bath. We're not going to cold seal. We are water bathing. I have water boiling to put over the pepper and onions. 
I have water boiling to put my jars in when it gets ready to water bath can. I'm fixing to use this one for uh, vinegar. You will notice that I am using stainless for everything. Even the bowl I have them sitting in is stainless. You do not want to use plastic or aluminum, something like that. You do not want to use that for this process. The recipe says to cover with boiling water and let stand five minutes. Then we're going to drain it. We've added one cup of sugar and we're adding two cups of vinegar. This is the white vinegar. It's at 5% acidity. In the book, it says anything from four to six. So we're adding the two cups of white vinegar. We're adding one tablespoon of salt. And I'm using plain salt. You can use cannon salt. Do not use iodized. Our stove is going off so we need to turn timer off and drain veggies i've got water coming up to a bowl to add back for i think 10 minutes this time covering the veggies again It calls for mixed spices, but I've got ground allspice, ground turmeric, and ground mustard. So I put a quarter of each, a quarter of a teaspoon of each in there. That way I don't have to have a bag or something in there and take the spices out. These are ground. And we're gonna bring this up to a bowl and then I'm gonna shut it down to a simmer for 15 minutes. Now this is sitting for the next 10 minutes in hot water and then we're going to drain it and get it ready to go in our vinegar and sugar mixture. Doesn't that look beautiful? It locked in the colors. Now we're draining it for the second time. I'm going to be adding it to the vinegar mixture and we're going to let that simmer for 10 minutes. Alright, we're going to simmer this for 10 minutes. Isn't that beautiful? Grandma's pepper hash. I love it. Okay, this has been cooking at a simmer. I'm gonna take it back up to a bowl because it says to have it boiling really good when you put it in your jars. Get my hot jars. And we're putting it in half pints. And you want some of your juice. Make sure you get some of both. Okay, that brought it up to our rim up here. We're gonna wipe the rim. Now these jars are hot and this is boiling liquid so you do wanna try to keep something. We're putting in half pints, that way we don't have a lot to eat at one time. I can use a half pint when I make potato salad. That's a, the right amount for my potato salad. So I can open a jar of my potatoes and I can open a jar of this uh, pepper hash. And you see it's got different colors in it. And we're going to put it over in the water. Okay. We've got a thing in the bottom to keep the jars off the bottom of the water, of the pot. We're going to add these, and we've got maybe three more to go, and we're going to have to have a little bit more water in our can. And see, we've kept this boiling while we're doing this. And getting it up to our little spot there. And I believe me, all this being that hot, it is hot. You don't want to burn your hand. And remember, if we were just cool sealing, 
this is all we would do and put it like this, but I'm going to the water bath method for 10 minutes. And if we have any left over, Danny and I are gonna be using it over the next couple of days. Because we gotta know what pepper We gotta has. have a sample. We gotta have a sample of pepper hash, right? That's it. This does have a lot of vinegar in it, so. Yeah, and it shouldn't go bad. I mean, sugar and vinegar, I know better. Sugar and vinegar are great preservatives. Wow. Okay, we're gonna see if we need some more water. Just, Just a little touch. bit. We got Not some hot much. water sitting over here already, so. And that's going to cause it not to boil for a minute. We'll wait to set the time once it starts boiling again. Yeah, and we're going to go 10 minutes. I see this one's not quite covered. Okay. We're going to go 10 minutes in a wall. A not a rapid boil, just a simmer boil. And then we'll take them out. And Papa, we have enough. We have enough to have some Ooh, samples. Yeah, we got enough to have some samples there. Yeah. All right, six beautiful jars of pepper hash from a 1960 ball blue book for home cannon. Pepper hash from a 1960 ball blue book. It's hash like our grandma would have made. This stuff is amazing. You saw how Danny reacted to it in uh, potato salad. It's worth a try. You got all those peppers, make pepper hash, or if, if you want to call it relish, from 1960. Thank you guys from Crazy Days.